Christian Church. We're so glad you guys are tuning in as we kick off our first week of our Holy Spirit series. ค่ะเรารู้สึกดีใจอย่างมากนะคะทุกคนเข้ามาร่วมกับพวกเราในสัปดาห์แรกของ Holy Spirit Series นะคะหรือซีรีส์พระวิญญาณบริสุทธิ์ Well, let us know where you guys are tuning in from. Maybe you're right here in Bangkok or all the way in the other side of the world. Let us know in the chat. ค่ะก็ขอให้บอกพวกเราหน่อยนะคะว่าทุกคนกำลังดูพวกเราจากที่ไหนคุณอาจจะอยู่ที่นี่นะคะที่กรุงเทพที่ประเทศไทยหรือว่าดูจากที่อื่นนะคะก็บอกพวกเราได้ในช่องแชทเลย Also, it's not too late to invite someone to church. Why don't you share them the link? Send it to a family or friend right now. ค่ะก็ยังไม่สายเกินไปที่จะแบ่งปันนะคะแล้วก็ชวนให้เพื่อนๆเข้ามาอยู่ร่วมกันในเออคิดได้จากออนไลน์นะคะก็ส่งลิงก์ได้เลยนะคะตอนนี้ Well, Pastor Man is going to lead us in worship right now. Why don't you stand up, position yourself to receive something, and let's lean in in the next few moments. ค่ะก็อาจารย์แมนด้านะคะจะนําพวกเราในการนมัสการนะคะขอให้เรายืนขึ้นนะคะแล้วก็วางตัวให้พร้อมที่จะนมัสการนะคะแล้วเดี๋ยวเราเข้ามาร่วมนมัสการกันค่ะ
พยายามค้นหาความจริงว่าเอ๊ะสิ่งนั้นคืออะไรเราฝันไปหรืออะไรแต่ว่าเราก็ไม่ได้ฝันนะมันก็เหมือนกึ่งหลับกึ่งตื่นอย่างเงี้ยค่ะจนคืนสุดท้ายเลยก็อธิษฐานกับพระเจ้าแล้วบอกกับพระองค์ว่าถ้าสิ่งนี้เป็นเรื่องจริงถ้าสิ่งนี้คือสิ่งที่พระองค์ประสงค์จะให้จุยเห็นจริงๆขอให้จุยเห็นไม้กางเขนที่ใหญ่และและจุยยอมรับว่ามันคือเรื่องจริงคืนนั้นก็จุยก็เห็นไม้กางเขนอันใหญ่ใหญ่มากใหญ่เท่าหน้าต่างเลยค่ะแล้วก็มีแสงสว่างส่องออกมาจากทางด้านหลังซึ่งคืนนั้นจุยรู้ตัวเลยว่าอันเนี้ยจุยไม่ได้ฝันจุยตื่นอยู่ร้อยเปอร์เซ็นแน่นอนเพราะฉะนั้นคืนนั้นเลยก็เป็นคืนที่จุ๋ยยอมรับพระเจ้าเข้ามาในชีวิตจุ๋ยแล้วบอกกับพระองค์ว่าจุ๋ยเชื่อแล้วและเชื่อหมดหัวใจว่าพระองค์มีจริงซึ่งหลังจากที่จุ๋ยรับพระองค์เข้ามาในชีวิตแล้วนะคะจุ๋ยรู้เลยว่านี่แหละคือความหมายของชีวิตจุ๋ยคือก่อนหน้านี้จุ๋ยมักจะตั้งคําถามกับตัวเองว่าชีวิตจุ๋ยต้องการอะไรคือจุ๋ยเป็นคนทํางานหนักแล้วก็อาจจะมีโอกาสดีๆเข้ามามากมายแต่ก็รู้สึกว่ามันไม่ใช่ชีวิตมันต้องมีอะไรมากกว่านี้จนจุ๋ยได้มาพบพระเจ้าแล้วจุ๋ยก็รู้แล้วค่ะว่าเนี่ยคือคําตอบและเนี่ยคือจิ๊กซอที่จุ๋ยตามหามาตลอดทั้งชีวิตเพราะฉะนั้นคือเมื่อจุ๋ยเจอสิจิ๊กซอชิ้นนี้แล้วใช่ไหมคะจุ๋ยก็จะไม่ปล่อยให้จิ๊กซอชิ้นนี้หายค่ะก็เป็นคำพยานนะคะที่ยอดยอดมากๆนะคะจากพี่จุ๋ย If you have a story of what God has done in your life, don't keep it in. Why don't you share it? Send us an email or let your life group leader know. ค่ะก็ถ้าหากว่ามีเรื่องราวใดๆนะคะที่พระเจ้าได้ทรงกระทำในชีวิตนะคะก็อย่าเก็บไว้คนเดียวนะคะก็ขอแบ่งปันให้หัวหน้าไลฟ์กลุ่มนะคะหรือว่าพวกเรารู้ก็ได้ We're going to come into a time of giving right now. The details will be up on the screen. ค่ะเดี๋ยวเราจะเข้าสู่ช่วงของการถวายสิบรูปนะคะข้อมูลนะคะก็จะขึ้นมาบนหน้าจอ We want to thank you guys for your generosity, especially during this time, and for continuing to faithfully sow into the kingdom of God. ก็อยากจะขอบคุณทุกคนนะคะที่ท่านมีความสัตย์ซื่อนะคะแล้วก็คอยนะคะหวานมาในเข้ามาในพระอาณาจักรของพระเจ้าในการตลอดเวลาในช่วงนี้ค่ะ It's because of your giving that people like you, who's just invited to church, was able to know about God and be saved. ก็เป็นเพราะว่าน้ำใจและความเอื้อเฟื้อของแผ่นคนนะคะที่ทำให้ผู้คนเช่นคุณจุ้ยนะคะได้เข้ามาที่เทียจักรแล้วได้รับการรู้จักกับพระเจ้า Well, we're gonna worship again. Why don't you prepare your hearts and straight up, so we're gonna hear from Pastor Corey. ค่ะเดี๋ยวเราจะกลับเข้ามานำมาสการร่วมกันอีกครั้งค่ะขอให้เตรียมใจให้พร้อมและหลังจากนั้นเราจะเข้ามาร่วมฟังนะคะพระคำจากอาจารย์โคลี่กันค่ะเพื่อนเดินเหนือเหนือเหนือเหนือเหนือเหนือเหนือเหนือเหนือเหนือเหนือเหนือเหนือเหนือเหนือเหนือเหนือเหนือเหนือเหนือเหนือเหนือเหน
heaven break out Come now in power Cover this land like you've done it before Would you do it again? And Lord send revival Lord send it now A move of your spirit Heaven break out Come now in power Cover this land like you've done it before Would you do it again? Heaven break out
great honor to be preaching the word today on Pentecost Sunday. I don't know about you, but I've been praying and expecting that today God is going to move powerfully across our church and in your life. Pentecost Sunday is the day that we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit and the birth of the New Testament church, of which we are a part of if you're a believer in Christ. And so it's a significant day. And also today we are launching a four-week series on the Holy Spirit. I felt God put upon my heart several weeks ago that we were to step into the month of uh, June, uh, really focusing on the Holy Spirit. And it all begins on Pentecost Sunday. So I'm encouraging over these four weeks to gather friends and family together, to watch online our services, to be a part of our life groups. If you're not a part of one, as we study the person of the Holy Spirit, as we get inspired again by His presence and power in our lives. One of the values of our church is miracles are normal. And we ask the question, am I living a Spirit-empowered life? And so today we want to begin talking about the person, the power, and the presence of the Holy Spirit on this day of Pentecost. And to introduce our series, why don't you keep looking to the screen and we're going to watch a short clip that introduces our series on the Holy Spirit. จงสงบเงียบพระเยซูได้ตรัสคำนี้ต่อพระยุที่ห่มกระนำกลางทะเลเมื่อพระองค์จากไปพระยุยังคงถาโถมเข้ามาระหว่างการรอคอยพระยุถล่มในใจเราเรากับร้องขอสิ่งที่เราไม่เคยรู้ว่าต้องการความทะเยอทะยานเห็นแก่ตนและความสงสัยในเรารุนแรงนะักเมื่อพระองค์หายลับไปในหมู่เมฆพลังใหม่ก็เข้ามาเราคุกเข่ายอมจำนนต่อหน้าพระองค์เราคุกเข่ายอมจำนนต่อหน้าพระองค์เมื่อพระวิญญาณบริสุทธิ์ลงมาถึงเสียงสายลมรุนแรงดังกล้องเปลวไฟคล้ายลิ้นปรากฏเหนือศีรษะเราต่างเปลี่ยนแปลงเป็นพระวิหารที่พระองค์ลงมาสถิตเราเริ่มพูดคำที่ไม่เคยได้ยินด้วยสติปัญญาที่ไม่ใช่ของเราเองเราเดินทางไปยังที่ที่ไม่เคยไปและประกาศต่อคนที่เราเคยเชื่อว่าไม่สามารถเอื้อมผิวเสียงร้องเรียกไม่เคยหยุดไปจนกว่าพระองค์จะเสด็จมาจะกว้างใหญ่ใกล้ไกลเราจะพูดพระวจนะด้วยพระวิญญาณบริสุทธิ์ผู้นำทางเราจะปกคลุมโลกนี้We want to be talking about the power of Pentecost, and I want to join with, uh, ask you to join with me as we just open up this series in prayer. So why don't you close your eyes and let's pray together. Father, we just thank you for your presence. We thank you, God, that we are celebrating today and we're acknowledging today the presence, the person, and the power of the Holy Spirit that came on the day of Pentecost 2,000 years ago. And so, Father, we just ask as we begin this series today that, God, you would come and you would fill us with your presence, that you would make us more aware of your tangible presence in our lives. God, we are hungry for your spirit. We are hungry for intimacy with you. We are hungry, Lord, to know you more intimately. And so, God, I just pray that wherever anyone is watching this, oh God, online right now, that, Lord, you would come by your Spirit, illuminate your Word to us, open the eyes of our heart to see who you really are today. And God, I just thank you. Lord, even as I preach, I, I believe the gift of faith is going to be imparted into people's hearts. People who have faith questions, people who don't know you are going to come into a uh, relationship with you like they've never had before. People who have not experienced your power are going to be filled with the power of Pentecost today. And so, Father, I pray, come and speak through your servant, anoint me, prompt my mind and my heart that every single one of us today would be encouraged, equipped and challenged to be the people of God that you call us to be in Jesus' name. Amen. We're talking about the power 
of Pentecost. And I'm joined with some of my friends on the platform here. And during my message, we're going to interact with them. But I want you to turn with me to Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And we're going to be reading through 2, verse 4. Acts chapter 2, verse 1, it's all about the day of Pentecost. And the Bible begins by saying, when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly they came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting and divided tongues as of fire appeared and rested on each one of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. It's a powerful passage of Scripture and as I read this Scripture and as I've been studying, preparing for this series over recent weeks, I'm reminded of when I was six years of age, I had a supernatural encounter with the Holy Spirit. I still remember it was a Sunday night at my mum and dad's church in Kalgoorlie, Western Australia in the mid 80s. And uh, we had had an amazing service And at the end of the service, my dad asked for people to come and be prayed for to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And although I was raised in a Christian home and my parents really taught me about the Spirit, I hadn't really encountered the presence of the Holy Spirit myself. And so I went down the front and as much as my mind at six years of age could understand or my mouth could articulate the reality of what it was that I was hungering for, I went and knelt at the altar at the front of the church and and along with other people, we began to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to fill us. A man of God came over to me and he laid hands upon my head. And as he began to pray, I felt a supernatural shift beginning to happen in my awareness and consciousness of what was going on around me and in me. And there was this inward compulsion, almost this bubbling up of a desire in my heart to open up my mouth and and, and declare the goodness of God. And yet when I opened up my mouth at six years of age, out came what we call a heavenly language speaking in tongues and for the next several minutes my whole uh, focus my my mouth my language my whole heart was fixated on the reality of this encounter that I was having as I was declaring in a heavenly language the, the fruit of being filled with the Holy Spirit Now this experience is known as the baptism of the Holy Spirit and for several years after and to this day I've been consciously aware of the presence and power of the Holy Spirit in my life. No matter how far I try to run away or how far I roam in terms of my own intimacy with God, I always come back to that experience and that encounter where I was filled with the Holy Spirit at that young age. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is an absolute significant experience available for every single believer that has called upon the name of the Lord and is saved. Now in the Greek, the word baptizo actually means immersion. Just as we see when someone is baptised under the water and in water, they are completely immersed in the water. The same idea applies to a garment that is plunged into a dye in order to make that garment a new colour. If that garment is going to be permanently affected, it has to be immersed, saturated in that colour. It has to be overwhelmed by that dye so that it can look a different way. Well, on the day of Pentecost 2,000 years ago, 120 disciples were baptised in the Holy Spirit and the church was birthed on that day. You see, Pentecost was a Jewish feast that was celebrated uh, because of the grain harvest 50 days after Passover. Passover, you may not have heard of that term, but it's an important term in the Bible as it relates to the Old Testament, the first part of the Bible, and as it relates to Jews and Hebrews who love and worship God. You see, in the Old Testament, when Israel was in captivity and slavery in Egypt, 
the tenth plague that came against the Egyptians that really saw the deliverance of the Hebrews from slavery to be able to go out into the wilderness and at Mount Sinai begin to worship God. That, that, that the tenth plague was that, that God would come and he would strike down the firstborn of a uh, son of every family in Egypt. And so what God instructed the Hebrews to do was to kill an unblemished lamb and to take the blood of that lamb and mark the doorposts of their household and their property so that as the Spirit of God passed by, the Spirit of God would recognise that blood and would pass over that house and go on to the next house. It's quite very graphic and very full on, but in the Old Testament, it was marked by judgment according to the law. Well, 50 days later, after that event, after Israel had actually fled and and had a massive exodus from Egypt, Israel gathered at Mount Sinai on Pentecost. And at Mount Sinai, there was this incredible encounter with God. All of a sudden, God began to reveal himself on top of Mount Sinai. And Moses and Aaron the priest would go up and begin to have this encounter with God. And in the Old Testament, there were tablets of stone where the Ten Commandments were written out. In the Old Testament, the law was written literally like on a tablet of stone. If you've got an iPad, just pick that up. It wasn't like that sort of tablet, but it was a tablet of stone. But in the New Testament, when Jesus came and the Holy Spirit was poured out on all flesh, the law is written on our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Just as the Passover was fulfilled on the cross through the sacrifice of the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world in the Gospels, you better believe that Pentecost was fulfilled when the Holy Spirit was poured out upon all flesh in the Acts of the Apostles. And it's so important that we understand not only that that experience and that encounter is available for every single believer who's watching online today and even for those whom you may not call yourself a believer but by the end of this message you're going to give your heart to God and you're going to find yourself hungering for the things of the Holy Spirit. This baptism of the Spirit is available for you today but it's also important as we look at this passage in Acts chapter 2 that we start to understand not only the event itself but the significance significance of the events that happen around the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. You see, before the day of Pentecost, the Saviour went up to heaven. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 1, just a chapter preceding the day of Pentecost in Acts 2, we read that while staying with them, Jesus ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said you heard from me, for John baptised with water, but you'll be baptised with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And then soon after Jesus had declared this, in verse 9 of Acts chapter 1, the Bible says, And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. You see, the promise of the Father that Jesus is talking about in this passage is the person of the Holy Spirit that was prophesied a thousand years before by the prophet Joel. And we read that in Joel chapter 2, verse 28 and 29, where it says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female servants in those days, I will pour out my Spirit. Now, years ago, I promised my kids that I would take them to Disneyland. Now, every single parent knows that you've got to be careful what you promise your children. I know you know all about that, Jason Staggers. 
And, uh, and so there, there is this sense that if you promise your kids, hey, after dinner, you've been good kids today after dinner, we're taking you to go get some ice cream. You, you better believe that that child is going to hold you accountable for every single promise that you make. Don and Steve knows all about this. And so especially if you say, kids, this time next year, we're all going to Disneyland. We're going to go to Mickey Mouse house and we're going to jump on all the rides, the roller coasters. We're going to have a great time in Disneyland. Well, you better believe not only do their ears tune into that, but they're going to hold you accountable to that. So much so that my wife and I started to save crazily to go to Disneyland. Because one, how many know every parent knows it's one thing to say it, it's another thing to save for it. All right. And so I started to save like you wouldn't believe. I'm preaching everywhere, putting every cent I could right into the Disneyland promise and so we planned for that we prepared for that we booked the tickets and we spent nearly four weeks on the west coast of the United States we booked a seven to ten day pass at Disneyland the kids thought they'd gone to heaven I thought I may have been in a nightmare but we went to Disneyland we made sure that if we were going to promise our kids that we fulfilled that promise Because as a father, my heart delights in blessing my children and seeing them experience all the wonderful things of life that I can provide for them as best as I can. Well, in the Bible, in Luke 11, 13, concerning this promise of the Father, Jesus said this, If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? We have a Father that when He promises us us the greatest gift of the Holy Spirit, you rest assured He will fulfill that promise. But before the Holy Spirit could come to earth, as that promise of the Father would be fulfilled, Jesus had to return to the Father. And the Bible says in John 16, 7, a really important passage of Scripture. It says, Jesus is speaking, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper being the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. In other words, Jesus is saying, the Holy Spirit inside of you is better than me standing beside you. I want you to think about that for a moment. Because many of us think to ourselves, If only Jesus was here in the flesh, in my problem, in my trouble, in the doctor's room when I get that bad report, when I'm facing a challenge in my finances. If only Jesus was here in the flesh, everything would be okay. And we read the Gospels almost with this longing to be able to see it and experience the reality of Jesus literally standing next to us. And yet Jesus tells us it's to your advantage that he goes away. Because if he does not ascend to the Father, he can't pour out the person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit living inside of you is better than Jesus standing next to you. So before the day of Pentecost, the Saviour went up. On the day of Pentecost, the Spirit came down to earth. And the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 2 verse 1, that when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place and suddenly there came from heaven, not from man, but from heaven, the sound of a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting and divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, this is an amazing passage of Scripture. There's a lot going on in it. If I was preaching in America right now, and I may be to some people watching online, this is what we call the Super Bowl chapter. But because we follow the AFL in Australia, it's the grand final chapter. This is where everything shifts. This is where everything turns the tide, right? And so there are six key signs of a move of God in this passage of Scripture. Another way of saying a move of God is that there are six key signs signs of revival. The first sign of revival is unity. 
The Bible tells us they were all together. What were they doing together? They were in prayer together. Acts 1.14 says, and all these were of one accord, not Honda Accord, but one accord. And they were all devoting themselves to prayer and intercession. That's all for the Honda drivers out there. There's nothing more powerful than being unified around prayer. There's nothing more powerful than being unified around intercession. And one of the primary things that we have got to get on the same page as God at is that where two or three are gathered in my name, there you are in the midst of them. And you're saying, well, I'm not gathered with all the other people in the auditorium right now and for good reason. But yes, we can be gathered together in spirit as well as we can gather together. But I'm looking forward to the other the side of this when we begin can begin to come back together and begin to pray and fast and intercede together and see God move in our live gathering I'm looking forward to seeing you on the other side of this the disciples were in unity secondly the disciples uh, experienced a full immersion the Bible says that the entire house where they were seated and gathered was filled with the Holy Spirit. It was filled with a mighty rushing wind. That tells me something. That entire properties, the room you're in right now, can be immersed in the presence and power, the pneuma wind of the Holy Spirit in that room. You can become tangibly aware of the presence of God right where you are. And whenever revival hits our hearts and marks our lives, there will be an accompanying manifestation of the wind of the Holy Spirit, of an immersion of the presence of God in our lives. Not only that, but there was a manifestation. The Bible said divided tongues as of fire appeared and rested on each one of them. Whenever revival comes, whenever there is a move of God, you will see this amazing thing take place. It will be accompanied by signs and wonders miracles will start to break out. There'll be an increase of our awareness of the supernatural manifestation of the Spirit. Not only that, but there was an infilling. The Bible says they're all filled with the Holy Spirit. When you encounter the Holy Spirit, you better believe something's gonna change on the inside of you. You're gonna be filled. Something is going to mark your heart, mark your life. The next sign, the fifth sign, was an outflow. They began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You see, when you have an encounter with the Holy Spirit, your language changes. Yeah outlook changes, your heart changes, how you behave and act changes and it's not just through a willful decision but it's because you've been empowered by the person of the Holy Spirit in your heart. Not only that, but there was a multitude, the Bible says, a harvest of souls of people that could hear the the declaration of the praises of God in their own language, which tells me that whenever the Holy Spirit moves, one of the main marks of a revival and an awakening in our lives is that God draws more and more people to himself. Well, after Simone and I got married, we lived in a unit with a wall heater. And uh, this was the only heater that was in fact in the house. And uh, it was a little bit similar to this, maybe a little bit bigger if the cameras can just show this uh, wall heater. And so we had no other heating in the house. And so when it got into the dead of winter, I think there was like two bedrooms and one bathroom and probably no toilet. But when, when we got into that house, there wasn't much there, including heat. And we were sort of there, we'd moved from summer into winter. And whenever it got really cold in that house, we had to get blankets on, true story, and we had to gather around the wall heater. Now in that wall heater, there was this little pilot light on at all times. But that little pilot light wouldn't affect the temperature or wouldn't change the temperature in the rest of the room. 
It would take quite a time once we'd actually turned that knob around for the heat and that little pilot light in that wall heater to actually go through that heater. And it wasn't until we actually turned the knob and we pushed things around that that little pilot light was like a flame that went through that wall heater and began to change the temperature in that room. In other words, the dial on that wall heater had to be turned up for there to be a change in the atmosphere. This is a great picture and metaphor for the difference between two major workings of the Holy Spirit. What we call firstly being born of the Spirit, it's when we get saved, and secondly being baptised in the Holy Spirit, when we are baptised, when the dial of the temperature of the presence and person of the Holy Spirit is turned up in our lives, and there is a fundamental difference between those two. For some believers, both of these experience, being born of the Spirit and baptised of the Spirit, can happen one at the same time. But for many believers, and in the book of Acts, we read that for many believers, it happened as a secondary experience. When you're born of the Spirit, it actually is where we get the term born again from. Before Christ, your spirit is dead in sin. Your spirit is trapped in darkness. But when you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, when you repent of your sin, there is a supernatural happening that takes place in your heart. The Holy Spirit comes and dwells in you, rebirths you, regenerates you, and you are supernaturally transformed. But there is a need for the presence and power of the Holy Spirit for literally the dial on the heater of your heart to be turned up so that you can experience the full measure of the power of God in your life. You see, Jesus is our example. Jesus is is our Lord and Saviour. And and not only that, but He is the person we look to for the evidence of this in His own life. We see that when the angel Gabriel came to Mary, the angel said that the Holy Spirit would overshadow Mary, the mother of Jesus. And literally, Jesus was born of the Spirit. Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. So there was, in essence, theologically, a new birth experience. But then we also see at age 30 in Matthew chapter 3, we see Jesus was baptised in the Spirit when He came up out of the baptism waters. The Bible says the heavens were open and the Spirit of God descended like a dove and remained upon Jesus. Before Pentecost, the Saviour went up. On the day of Pentecost, the Spirit came down. And because of Pentecost, the saints went out to lost people all around them. You see, the Bible says in verse 14 that the Apostle Peter, who was standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and he addressed them. Now, what did Peter actually say to those who were listening? Well, it says in verse 22, he said, Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, listen to this, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for Jesus to be held by death itself. What is Peter doing? He is all of a sudden with boldness, with power, with authority and with love for people that are far away from Jesus. He is declaring the gospel and the goodness of God of who Jesus is. You see, Simon Peter, those two words are significant and they both represent uh, pre-Holy Spirit encounter and post-Holy Spirit encounter. Simon, the word Simon means reed. If you can picture with me a reed that could be in some lake areas that's in the water, when the wind sweeps across that lake, that reed just blows to and fro by the wind. 
Well, that was Simon. Simon was someone who pre-Pentecost had denied Christ. He was someone who had foot in mouth disease. He was someone who was boldly proclaiming one thing, one moment, and the next minute was running away from the front line of being a bold witness for Christ. However, post-Pentecost now, we see Peter is bold. He's filled with power. He's filled with authority. And the word Peter means rock. Something had changed him because of the work of the Holy Spirit in his life. And he gets up and he begins to preach the gospel with boldness. You see, in John chapter 20, before Pentecost, the Bible tells us that after Jesus was crucified, the disciples were locked away behind closed doors in fear. But all of a sudden, just fast forward a few chapters later, after the day of Pentecost, in Acts 4, the Pharisees noted the courage and boldness of Peter and John as they stood before the authorities and gave a reason for the hope that they have. I heard an amazing story one time of two tree cutters. And these two tree cutters decided that they were going to compete against each other. And so they said, tomorrow morning, we're going to wake up and we're going to choose our tools and our weapons and our warfare. And we're going to go and we're going to have a competition. And from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., we're going to work all day and we're going to see who can chop down the most trees. And, and so the, the other guy said, fantastic. I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be great. Let's have a good night's sleep. And the reward, what's the reward? The reward is I'm going to shout you a meal uh, tomorrow night when all the restaurants open after COVID uh, pandemic restrictions. And we're all going to go out to Meat and Wine Co. or the Hunter and Barrel. And we're going to have a fantastic meal together. And so the next morning came and the first tree cutter went and he got his Acts. So I just want to let you know that a lot of the staff have been so compliant in recent days uh, whenever I pick up this axe. And so um, we, the tree cutter went and he got his axe and he started to sharpen the axe. He was getting ready for that 9 a.m. Uh, bell to start and he would be off. And so he's sharpening the axe. He's getting the axe ready. It gets to nine o'clock and he is ready. He's primed. He's been training for this his entire life. And so he gets that axe and he starts chopping away like that action starts chopping away at that first tree and all of a sudden before you know it after a few minutes he gets into that tree that tree goes down and then he gets into the next tree and he's hammering away and he's cutting down that tree and bets of swede are starting to come down his face and all of a sudden he is getting exhausted well the second guy decided that he was going to do and follow his own pathway And so he decided to jump into his pickup truck and he heads down to the hardware store and he picks up a chainsaw. That's right, he picks up a chainsaw. Now, if the staff were compliant before, they're really compliant now. And the the second tree cutter brought this chainsaw back to this property and plantation where all of these trees were and he decided to kickstart this chainsaw. And so... There you go. He decides that he's going to start to cut through all of the trees. And by like 10 a.m., he is like 30 trees ahead of the dude who's just beating away every tree through his own effort and his own strength. And by lunchtime, the first tree cutter said, you know what, it's useless. You are so far ahead. You have some mechanical help. And so I can't do anything. I can't compete with that. And they went to Hunter and Barrel and they had a great meal together. And the second guy, the first guy, actually shouted the second guy a meal. Now I'm going to hold on to this for a second just to create a little bit of nervousness up here on the platform. (laughs) But, you know, I began to think about when I heard that parable for the first time, how trying to follow Jesus without the baptism of the Holy Spirit is like trying to knock down a tree and chop down a tree with an axe when you have a super-powered, supernatural chainsaw in your spirit available for you. 
Why on earth would you want to live life in your own strength, in your own effort, trying to knock down obstacles that are coming your way when you can have the power of the Holy Spirit in your life every day of your life? Don is really glad I handed that to him the right way. Jesus said it like this in Luke 24, 49. He said, stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. What was he saying? He was saying, I don't want you to actually go out and try and evangelise. I don't want you to try and change the world. I don't want you to make disciples until you've been empowered with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Until that supernatural chainsaw is in your heart. Don't you dare go and try and overcome the power of the enemy in your life. So before Pentecost, the Saviour went up. On the day of Pentecost, the Spirit came down. Because of Pentecost, the saints went out in power. And after Pentecost, the sinners came into the church. The Bible says in verse 41 of Acts chapter 2, So those who received His Word were baptised, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. In verse 47 it goes on and says, And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. You see, something had changed in the church's witness. It was accompanied by the conviction of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in John 16, 8, when the Holy Spirit comes, He will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. I don't know about you, but I am grateful for the conviction of the Holy Spirit. I am so grateful that I am not left to my own conscience and my own ability, but I have the accompanying presence with conviction in my life that guards my heart against the lies of the enemy. I can still remember being at Hillsong Conference back in the year 2000 in a big stadium with 25,000 other people. And I'm sitting there and I just graduated from the police force and I was trying to run away from the call of God upon my life. And as I'm sitting there and the preacher is beginning to preach, as that message went on, all of a sudden, the conviction of the Holy Spirit started to come on me. And I started to feel different. I started to feel challenged by what I was hearing. And I knew in my heart that had become a little bit hardened towards the things of the Spirit, that I was running away from God, that I actually needed to pursue God and respond to this altar call. And in fact, even before I got to the altar call, I was so convicted that I got out of my seat, literally, and I began to walk towards the front. And then my pace quickened because I was right up the back. And then by the time he had called for the altar call, the preacher, I was running down the front, literally trying to push people out the way to get to the front. Such was the conviction of the Holy Spirit in my heart. Thank God for the convicting presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives and in our hearts that it makes us aware of our sin and our need to come into right relationship with God. I remember the story of my own mother who got saved soon after I was born, that she attended a church near her apartment along with my father. And for three weeks, there was no altar call in this church service. But in the third week, she wasn't waiting any longer for the altar call. She literally walked down the front during the preaching of the message, like mother, like son. And she literally, she was not saved. And she walked down and stood in front of the preacher and said, what must I do to get saved? Such was the convicting presence of the Holy Spirit. You see, the ultimate purpose of Pentecost is to actually empower our witness to the world. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 tells us, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. That Greek word for power is the word dunamis. It's where we get the word dynamite or dynamic from. It's talking about the power of God. It's dynamic. It's like a stick of dynamite that has an effect on the atmosphere and environment around it. That Greek word for witnesses is actually the word martyrio, where we get the English word martyr from. 
Literally, this is what God is saying. He's saying that you will have so much power and that power will be so tangible inside of you that even if you had to lay down your life for your faith in Jesus Christ, you would be able to. Such would be that power in your life. You see, when the Holy Spirit fills you, He gives you the supernatural ability to be a witness for Him. Even when people persecute you, even when people make fun of you, even when people put you down for the the life choices you make because you wanna honour God and serve God. And we're gonna make sure that our walk with God and the power of the Holy Spirit that's in our lives isn't about external appearances. That it's not about trying to just keep up an appearance in church on Sunday. You know, when I was a personal trainer 25 years ago, I worked in a fitness centre, all different fitness centres all over Melbourne. I, I would train different people and some of them were people who were really serious about their fitness and serious about their muscles and all these bodybuilders and you get into a conversation with them and, and it was great that they were interested in their health, but I would ask them, for what purpose Do you spend, you know, a gazillion hours in the gym every week? For what purpose? Are you an athlete? No. Are you like uh, in the emergency services? No. Are you in security? No. What is it? Why do you actually spend all that time building all of that strength and power into your body and into your muscles? And they said, oh, there's no purpose other than I just like the look. And you became very aware very quickly that the whole motive, the whole heart, the whole purpose behind what they did was about their external body image. And actually, yes, one of the byproducts was health and fitness, but part of it was all just simply about cosmetics and how they looked. Well, you know what? In the kingdom of God, we can be guilty of the same thing. You see, just like those bodybuilders who probably needed a little bit more purpose to match their power, for some of you watching online today, you are filled with the Holy Spirit. You already are, have experienced many, many times the significant encounters with God, where God's come to you and spoken to you, filled you with His presence. Maybe today you don't need more power. Maybe what you actually need is more purpose. The purpose that God gave you that power in the first place. Maybe that purpose is is what is waiting for you to engage with and connect with. But for others of you, you need more power. For some of you, maybe you've come from a church tradition where you haven't been taught about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You haven't been taught about the privilege and the beauty of speaking in tongues. Maybe you haven't ever had anyone pray with you to receive the fullness and the baptism of the Holy Spirit in your life. I wanna tell you today, that can happen for you right here, right now, in this Holy Spirit series, in this altar call, right now in this service that you can experience for yourself the glorious presence and power of the Holy Spirit. And so I wanna invite you to actually prepare your heart and to ready your heart in this moment to actually receive the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life in a way like you've never experienced before. When I'm teaching people how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I like to use a simple acronym of a word and that word is ready. The letter R stands for repent. The Bible says in Acts 2, 38, repent and be baptised every one of you and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Repentance is a change of mind and a change of heart. It's not just feeling guilty about something, it's opening up our mouth and saying, God, I don't, I'm no longer the Lord of my life, you are, and I wanna follow you as my Lord and Saviour. I repent of living in my own strength and ability and I am now gonna be filled with your presence. The letter E of that word ready stands for expect. The Bible tells us in Acts 3, 5, the lame beggar at the gate, beautiful. He looked at Peter and John and he looked at them expecting to receive something from them. You see, no one can minister to you something you're not expecting. If you're not expecting to have an encounter with God, I can't minister that to you. God can't minister that to you. Everything that you want or desire in God has got to be met with expectation. The letter A stands for ask. 
Ask in faith. We heard it before in Luke eleven thirteen. 13. If you know how to give good gifts to your kids, how much more will the heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. The letter D stands for drink. Jesus speaking to the Samaritan woman in John chapter four says, whoever drinks of this water, speaking of natural water, will thirst again. But he who drinks of this living water that I will give them, they will never thirst again. And that water will well up within them a spring unto eternal life. And the letter Y stands for yield. Romans 12.1 says, present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. When you come towards God and you say, God, fill me with your spirit. You've got to yield your body, yield your mind, yield your tongue, yield everything that you are and present your body as a living sacrifice.
time to join with me in prayer as we ready ourselves for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Wherever you are right now, watching and listening to this song, to this message today, you need to know that just as we in this room are sensing the presence of God here, that the reality of His presence and His power can be felt and realised in your life today. I'm just gonna take you on a journey over these next few moments of us praying together through that word ready as we prepare our hearts and ready our hearts to receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And I'd invite you as a family or if you're by yourself or maybe with a few friends, I invite you to actually enter into this time, open up your heart and say, God, I make myself available to you as we begin to pray together. And so it begins with repenting, repenting of sin, of anything that would separate us from God. And so why don't we just pray together and ask God to forgive us for anything that Lord, we've thought about or we've said or we've done that has actually grieved His heart. And so Father, we come to You today and we, we thank You that we can receive forgiveness for our sins, but God, we repent, we turn away from those things that have grieved Your heart. And we ask God right now in Jesus' Name that Lord, there would be a change. There would be a complete shift in our hearts and in our lives. Lord, if we've been uh, living as if we are our own King and we are our own Lord, God, we repent of that and say, Jesus, come and be our Lord and come and be the King of our heart. God, we repent of wanting to do life, maybe even follow You or be a part of the church in our own strength and ability. We need your presence, your anointing in our hearts and in our lives. And so God, we repent, we turn away from ourselves and we turn to you, Father. We also pray in expectation today. And so I wanna ask you, how expectant are you for God to come and pour out his Holy Spirit in your life? Just like that lame beggar who was expecting to receive something. Are you expecting today? Father, we come to You and we expect, O oh God, that as we pray today, that Lord, You will reward our faith. And so Lord, we not only expect, but God, we ask. Your Word says to simply ask and You shall receive. Seek and You'll find. Knock and that door will be open. Lord, that if we know how to give good gifts to our kids, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? And so God, not only do we expect, but right now, wherever you are, why don't you begin to ask God to come and fill you? Why don't you ask Jesus to pour out His Spirit, the mighty baptism of the Holy Spirit, to fill you up to flow, overflowing in your life. That if you've seen a lack of power, there's a lack of anointing, the supernatural ability to live for Jesus, then right now, God, we ask, I ask God that you would come and fill me, that you would change me, that you would mark my heart. Lord, change my language. Lord, shift my thinking. Empower me for the life and the ministry that you've called me to. And Lord, not only do we expect and ask today, but Lord, we drink in your presence. Oh God, I thank you that when we drink of this living water, we will never thirst again. And I wanna invite every single one of you, why don't you just soak in the presence of God? Why don't you lift your hands? Why don't you allow the immersion of the presence of God to overwhelm you? Become tangibly aware of His presence right now. And by faith, His Spirit, maybe even invisibly, but by your Spirit, just drink in His presence. Breathe deeply and just allow the presence of God to begin to, to come and fill you. The breath of heaven to come and awaken your spirit and your heart in God and I would encourage you to yield yourself to God the Bible says in Romans 12 1 to present our bodies as living sacrifices would you present your body today would you yield your mind and all the logic and reason that you may be battling with right now 
Would you yield your tongue to the person of the Holy Spirit? Would you yield your physical body that when the Holy Spirit comes, there is a manifestation? We do sense something different in our bodies. Something sometimes changes. Sometimes we feel overwhelmed and overcome by this heaviness of the presence of God that we feel like we can't stand any longer. Maybe some of you feel like you want to kneel. You just feel impressed upon you, like you're getting filled with the Spirit and you need to actually sit down, maybe lie down, prostrate on your face. Whatever it is today, I want to invite you today to yield yourself to God. Don't simply just watch me and listen, but participate in your miracle today. God wants to fill you by His Spirit. He wants to empower you to be a witness to the world around you. He's gifted you and empowered you to make a difference in your community, in your generation, to have a reason for the hope that you have in your mouth and in your heart every day of your life. And so God, today we just come to You. We make ourselves available. You don't make us available, we make ourselves available. We want to be filled with Your Holy Spirit. We want to be consecrated set apart for You, separated from the Spirit of this world and set apart for the Spirit of God. And so Father, today I ask that God right now, supernaturally healings would begin to break out upon people's bodies and in people's bodies right now. I pray, oh God, that the baptism of the Holy Spirit would manifest in people's spirits right now, accompanied by bold signs and wonders speaking in tongues and prophecy. Father, right now in Jesus' Name, I pray, Lord, that the language of heaven would fill our mouths. Lord, the truth of Your Word would fill our hearts. The power of the Holy Spirit would infuse our spirits with energy and strength. God, we are so hungry for You today. I pray for people who need direction. God, would You come prophetically and open up their understanding. Give them visions and dreams and insights, oh God. I pray today and over the next four weeks that there would be a supernatural uh, impartation and awakening of our hearts as we learn and better understand the importance of the person and the power of the Holy Spirit upon the earth and in our lives and in our hearts. In Jesus' Name we pray. Amen. Hi Church, wherever you are right now, just close your eyes and reach out your hands. I want to pray for you uh, right where you are. If you can stand to your feet and just commit this next few moments to God. I believe that people are going to be filled with the Holy Spirit, that people are going to be healed, that people are going to be touched by the power of God. So as we heard from Pastor Cora, you can kneel down, you can uh, lift up your hands, whatever you need to do right now, you do that in your lounge room. So Father, right now, God, we ask by your Holy Spirit, God, that you would fill every house, you would fill every life, God, that's reaching out to you. God, I pray people that have never been filled with your Holy Spirit, never spoken in tongues, God, I pray right now that they would receive that gift. God, you would fill them from the very top of their head all the way through their body. They would sense your presence. God, I pray you would wash away everything, God, that separates us from you. God, you would awaken those gifts in our lives. God, that people would prophesy, people would speak in tongues, people would uh, have gifts of faith in their life. So right now we pray that your touch would be on every person's life. God, they'll never be the same again. God, that they will be changed from the inside out because of your power. God, and we thank you for all that you've already done. God, and we give you glory in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.
Hey, what an amazing word. God, I pray that that word from Pastor Corey just impacted your life. It wouldn't be something that just does something in your life for today, but it would be an ongoing change in your life. Maybe as Pastor Corey was talking about repentance, there's areas in your life that you need to repent and turn away from and turn towards God. You need to know God loves you. He has a purpose for your life and He's waiting for you. So if you made that decision as Pastor Corey was preaching, why don't you click on the button that says you want to accept Jesus into your life. We would, we would love to pray with you, have the opportunity to help you on this journey of following Jesus. Also, as you've been hearing the message, maybe God has done something, you received the Holy Spirit. Come and tell us, let us know, email us, and we would love to share that story. I don't know about you, Pan Pan, but that was an amazing word. I'm going to listen back to that word on YouTube. One more time, let's give it up for Pastor Corey for a great word. It was amazing. Hey, who thought Nick did an awesome job with hosting today? She's a natural, far better than me. So I'm going to invite her back. Come back, Nick, and share with the church what's coming up. Very cool. Well, there are now more chances to view our services. You can view it at 11 a.m. if you're an early riser or you want to sleep in on a Sunday morning. You can view it at 2 p.m. Well, every Sunday at 1 p.m. we have kids service happening online. Make sure you get your kids there. If you want to register, head over to our website. Well, our online lounges are happening right now. The links will be in the chat. Why don't you come into one, say hi, even if it's just for a few minutes. Don't forget to keep updated as well. Follow us on Facebook or Instagram. And if you'd like to get connected, head over to our website. Well, we love you guys. Hope you guys have a blessed week. And we'll see you next Sunday. ค่ะก็รักทุกคนนะคะก็อยากจะขอให้ทุกคนมีสัปดาห์ที่ดีแล้วเจอกันสัปดาห์หน้าค่ะบาย